So welcome to Bunny's Designs. This is a live show, live people. So I'm having an uttering chat. Um, I thought I'd have a quick um, discussion about colour and why I buy, I try to buy six colours um, and I'm getting out the habit of having lots and lots of colours. It's nice if you're not very well and if you want don't want to mix, but if you want to kind of really get into paintings and um, drawings that look really really good and kind of have um, a connection it's normally to do with the colour so mixing your own colours and having lots of colours derived from six main primary colours that normally gives you um, a very very good scope plus the fact you could have six of everything and not break the bank or you can buy six colours of any particular medium you want and if you didn't like it again you haven't broke the bank so <clears throat> my favorite favorite best colors that I've always been taught with um, and I was taught at the Jacob Cromer Art College in Leeds in the um, late 70s early 80s was Elysian Crimson so um, and I use it whether it's a watercolor crayon whatever it is so I thought I would use my Neos because I want to show you where other colours appear. So if you want to try to make um, a gamboge, which is a very gorgeous, rich yellow, you can do. Now, it's obviously not going to be an original gamboge because that's why a gamboge is an expensive paint to buy. It's the pigment, but it can, you can get the colour, you can make the colour from six colours. So, we've got Elysian Crimson. Now, I will give you, and that's the pink, that's the red purple. And then we have the red, or, uh, the red orange, which is cadmium red so with these two colors of red there isn't a purple you can't make and there isn't an orange you can't make and here we have we have the yellow orange which is cadmium yellow and that's a warm yellow and then we have a yellow green which is a cold green and I normally like lemon I can't spell a lemon yellow and if you look for these colors you will probably get sorry about the scruffy writing you will probably get the best six colours that you can make all the other colours from. Oh hi Judy, anybody else popping in? Welcome to Bunny's Designs. So the blues, we've got a blue green because it's nearest the green here. And we'll just have to pan out I think just to make sure we can see everything. And I have a wonderful new thing that makes me, I can move the camera rather than moving. <laughs> so the blue green is a cold blue and I use cerulean blue. Cerulean blue. And then the purple blue I use is French ultramarine or I'll just call it ultramarine. But normally it's called the French Ultramarine is the best one. The Ultramarine is a slightly different, slightly different, only slightly different, but we'll, you'll see that for the start off. Now, because I haven't, I can't find the colours I want, I'm using these representations. So we've got a pale cold blue and we've got a purpley blue. 
we have a pinky red or a red purple as I call it and we have a red orange which is cadmium red and then we have a yellow green and we have a yellow orange and the reason I, I called them orange and green um, blue green and purple oh sorry I'm very big pen, pen, pen. so that's the blue green and this is the blue purple and the reason I've called them this is because this this warm blue sorry the bunnies are having a moment this purple blue or blue purple so I should call it and this red purple this Elysian crimson if you mix these two together you're going to get the best purple you're going to get the brightest purple and this is why sometimes people have problems because they think well hang on a minute I've got a blue and I've got a red. I've got brown. Why have I got purple? Everybody knows that red and purple make, uh, sorry, red and blue make purple. If you mix the cold blue and the cold cadmium red together, you will get brown or you'll get a dirty purple, which is wonderful for shadows if you want to do shadows. But if you want the bright, clean, crisp purple, you need a ready pinky purple a ready a purpley red a pinky red and you need a purple blue like French ultramarine so we then want to make and that's a secondary color so then we want to make an orange so we have cadmium red and cadmium yellow normally makes the best orange and they're normally called a cadmium orange for obvious reasons so if you see a cadmium orange in a shop it's going to be the middle brightest orange you can find um, purple is normally just called a purple there are lots of different purples, but there's there's bluey purples and there's pinky purples, but we're going to come to that in a second. Now, the greens, you want the coldest blue and the coldest yellow to make the brightest greens. Now, again, you can make greens with these two colours. This is a blue and this is a, a yellow, but they've, they're kind of warmer, so you can get duller colours. But if you want a bright hooker's green a bright pea green or a grass green then you need the bright yellow a cold yellow a lemon yellow and you need a very cold blue sky blue cerulean blue um, a pale blue and that makes the best greens now we can have green blue at that side and we can have a greeny yellow at that side we can have an orange yellow at this side and we can have an orange red at that side so the ones that are nearest here are, near, are called orange and then whatever color they're nearest um, the primaries are called yellow and then yellow orange or yellow green so we're getting where we're going to get to some tertiary colours next. So purple, red, and then we've got purple, blue. So I thought I would go through my Neocolor 2s to put colours that we know and love in a colour wheel so you have a basic understanding that if you don't have a particular colour, you can make it if you have these six colours. Um, and now I always start with my neos. I have them and pencils and my Derwents. Everything is nearly always in this colour uh, order. And if I'm using a palette, if I'm doing a big oil painting, the, I'm always going from light to darks. And it's a traditional way, but obviously you put your colours how you want to use them 
because it's easiest for you. So you don't have to do it this way. It's just, it's a traditional way to do it and it's the way I was taught and I find it the easiest because I've been doing it. But you might find that you want to work, you want your browns and greens together or you want your other colours together. So in my colour order here, I have some quite pale colours. Here we have... A pale yellow. So a pale yellow is this yellow with white or with water. Because we're dealing with water-based products I just add water. Now I very rarely buy black and white but with watercolours you don't need either. If you want a paler colour you add white and if you want a darker colour or a different colour we're going to come to that in a second. So I'm going to leave that for the second because it's it's kind of a, a paler colour. It's a tone or a tint. If it's a tone or a tint, it's being given a grey, a black or a white. So at the moment we're just looking at our tertiary colours. So this is just colours added from two other colours or three other colours. Now the tertiaries are everything in between. So before I go any further, I have to find a purple. So I'm going to find um, that's lilac. I'm going to find a violet. I think I'm going to put violet there. If I do, I may have a purple. I think I'm just going to find a purple. Bear with me. I do have this old set of Nia's, and it does have a very co good collection. And I'm sure I've got a purple violet, cobalt violet and purple violet, trust me. There's a purple violet. It's a bit pinky, is that? I think I'm going to use this. Oh, the cobalt violet wouldn't even be there, so bear with me a second. I will find a purple. What we want is something that's a pure purple. And I can find everything but I've got grass green which I'm going to use there which is the bright green um, and I think I have a cadmium orange a golden cadmium no, you see I have a oh, what's that one? I think I have a vermilion in that one so here we have a reddish orange and we have a golden cadmium yellow. And that doesn't really help because um, I've got that one in that set as well. I want a cadmium orange and then that will give me... Oh, I'll use that one. So we have our bright orange, a cadmium orange, we have our bright purple, and we have our bright green. So looking at these near colour twos, I have canary yellow. Canary yellow is not the coldest, but it's not a warm, it's a cold, so it goes on yellow greens. I have a yellow, and again, it's not a cadmium, it's cool, but it's slightly warmer than canary yellow. Now this is just my set, you probably have others as well. We have a golden yellow. Now a golden yellow isn't quite the cadmium yellow, but it's getting warmer. I then have an orange, so I'm going to put orange there. So that's my orange. Now I know 
I know the golden cardium and yellow looks there, but it is there. <laughs> Um, I'm not going to bother, oh I've got fast orange, so fast orange is there. It's just a bit redder. Then we've got flame red. Now flame red I would think is an orange, but it's not a red orange, it's an orange red. So I always say that the Caran d'Ache um, Neocolor 2s and the Derwent Watercolor Pencils Anything that comes in set of about 70 to 100 normally has a good range of these important colours. But we don't need them. Um, the browns I'm not going to do at the moment. So this is vermilion red. So a vermilion red is a red orange. So it's going to go here. So we've got cadmium red. But if you want something that's a little bit orangier but not quite an orange, you want vermilion. This one is scarlet, and scarlet isn't quite a pinky Elysian crimson, and it's not quite a cadmium, it's in between. I've got two scarlets for some reason. The next one is a ruby red. So a ruby red, again, is not quite as pinky as it is in crimson but it's pinkier than vermilion uh, than scarlet and carmine now carmine is actually purplier it's a, it's a red purple so it's it's still a red but it's it's purplier than Elysian crimson so that's going to go on that side um, this is a raspberry and it's a it's a kind of a hue so it's going to go at the back so I'm not going to bother with that one. We want things that you can make without adding um, it's a tint or a tone. So we've got those colours. The next one here is I think I've got carmine out. Yeah I've got carmine. Again they've got a Bordeaux, a, a, a Bordeaux that's not right. We have now a, a purple. Now they call it a purple. I would say it's a pinky purple. So it's going here. Then we have purple violet. Now purple violet means it wants to go in between the pinks and the purples. A mauve is obviously a tone, a tint because it's got white in it. It's a paler version, and we just want strong colours. This one's lilac, and lilac, again, isn't quite pink, but it's not the rich purple, so it goes in between. Um, I think this one's aubergine, and again, aubergine is a tone, it's, so it's going not directly next to it. The same with lilac, it's a paler version. So we go to the blues now. And again, some of my old ones aren't named. It's a Neo before Neos were called Neos. Um, and it's a very, very pale blue. But it's not quite... Oh, it's a bit greeny, isn't it? It's got a hint of green in it, so it's going here. So we've nearly got... We've got our oranges, our reds, our pinky reds and our purples. So we've now got a royal blue. So a royal blue, it's not a cold blue, but it's not as it's not a it's a purple blue. So it wants to go in between French ultramarine and purple because it's a purple blue. In fact, I tell a lie. What did I say it was called? Royal blue. It's it's a warm blue, but it's not as warm as French ultramarine, so it wants to just go next to it, just at this side. So if you wanted to make a royal blue, you would use French ultramarine and a touch of this colour, the colder blue. Then we have, I only want, that's the sapphire blue, and again sapphire blue, it's not as cold as cerulean blue, or light blue 
so it wants to go in between this one is I have an ultramarine so this is a dark ultramarine this is an ultramarine so again that wants to go there then we have just a blue so a blue again can go it's not going to be a purple and it's not going to be a cold blue it's dead in the middle um, we've got a night blue which again is a tint and a tone indigo blue is again cold but it's a tint it's a tone then we have a cobalt blue so cobalt blue is a cold blue so it wants to be at this side um, blue jeans is more of a tint but it is a cold blue um, there's a gentian blue again that wants to be right in the middle because it's not it's not cold and then we start to get to our turquoise greens so turquoise green is going to go right smack in the middle because it's a turquoise green so it's just got to go slightly to one side of the fib. Um, light blue again would go as a tint or a tone so we don't want that um, what else have we got so then we're going to our greens now I missed that one out we want this is a greenish blue so greenish blue wants to be on this side And then we have dark green. So I don't want to use a dark green really. This is a bright green, so I'm going to put that here because it's just that little bit yellower than the green. So I'm going more for colour rather than light and dark. So it's not a tone, it's not a tint. Um, That's the dark green. And again, the olives are a different kind of... This one is... This is um, a bit like the phthalo green, so it's a bluey green. So I'm going to put that in between. So if this is a bluish green. So this is a greenish blue and this is a bluish green. So again, it wants to go here. So it's getting near a green, but it's just got that hint of blue. So I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Empire Green again is a bit greenier. Emerald Green is green. Um, some of these are like a, a tint and a tone, so you're adding white to them or water. Jade Green. Um, and then we have these colours which are a pale green and this one is called Chinese green and when it first came I thought well it really wants to go with the yellows but when you put it next to the yellow it has a green tint so it has to go right next to that cold it's very cold but it's right next to the lemon yellow it's just got a very slight tint of green and that's why it's called Chinese green and it's not a yellow and we have a light green and there's a lime green so I'm actually going to put lime green in so I think that's going to do that for because most of these are kind of mixed with white so they become a tone or a tint oopsie and sometimes now that's a light blue so light blue would go there would go there so now we just want a few, um, what have we got, orangey reds, I think I've got them all out. Got scarlet. Saffron again is a tint and a tone. Apricot is an orange with white to it. Saffron's got some colour to it. Uh, Venetian red. Now, Venetian red again is a, is a tint and a tone. 
but as you can see if I bunch them up together here what a colour wheel that is now it's nice to have them like this so we've got our original and I've used my um, neo my, my neo colours but they're, they're the original uh, quailer so they're little fat and I wish they'd bring them back because these snap and break and these don't um, so we could possibly badger so if we can try and get this as a colour wheel you can see where everything is but you don't need all these colours um, I haven't found which is unfortunate a gamboge but gamboge would go here very just just next to just next to there <clears throat> so gamboge is a very very traditional um, it's it's a warm gamboge yellow it's a warm yellow it's probably halfway between orange and cadmium yellow it's probably smack bang in the middle it's a very very nice it's a very nice colour um, so we've got canary yellow canary yellow is a cold yellow um, and then we have an ordinary just a yellow but it's a bit warmer and then we have the golden yellow now golden yellow isn't quite a cadmium it's just not as warm so again remember the coldest yellow and the warmest warmest yellow you can have all the others in between but then you get all the other colors as well so that is about what we can say about the colours I have. Now obviously I don't have as many of, as these here. There should be some on here somewhere. I do have oops, another set which I haven't sorted yet. Um, again, I think that one is a little bit warmer there. These were Neo colours before they became Neo colours. So I have some very old sets. Um, this one is probably a little bit like that uh, again we've got a pink but the pink doesn't really want to be there because pink is a red adding white so you could add white to all these reds and you'd get a completely different variation so if you want a pink you need to add oops, I've just got one more there That's the golden yellow, so I've already got that one. Some of these um, I have duplicates. Again, that's the light blue. But you can tell that they all fit somewhere in that colour wheel. That's the ultramarine. It's a bit bluer, that one. That one is the ultramarine colour. reddish orange which is that one <clears throat> so what I wanted to show you was that just having the six the six colors okay, I've got more blues I haven't got any blue purples have we I think that's probably got to go there yeah so we've got the pinky pinky ready purples there and then we've got the purple and then we've got the, and that's a pinky one and the blue purples want to go on this side I think that's a cobalt cobalt blue cobalt violet so again it's a blue but it's a purple blue but it's purplier than French ultramarine so it goes there Um, the, the, the 
<clears throat> the traditional colours were cadmium, so they're more expensive. So the red cadmium is more expensive than a red cadmium hue. So this one is called light cadmium red hue. Um, but when you look at it in a watercolour, even in these, um, they're in series, and you find a pure cadmium is the most expensive because it, it's, it's a truer colour. So you would get, I think I've got, let's say, Lemon Yellow is Series 1, Cerulean Blue is Series 1A. They're more expensive. Um, I've got a Cobalt Blue Hue, and that's Series 1. I think it's Series 3. One of them goes up in number and one comes down, and I can never remember what they are. Let me have a look at this. This is Elysium Crimson. But you can always tell a good set. And the cadmium yellow is normally expensive. Now you can buy an orange, but a cadmium orange is normally the brightest orange and that's why that one's more expensive. Same with the cobalt blues. There's, there's certain names that are pure colours, but it's the, it's the nature of the colour. So the cadmium red is always a cold red. Um, and I said this last week, that it's not very often a good company of of art materials are going to call a pinky red cadmium because they they think if an artist is going to pick up a cadmium red and it turns out to be pink they're going to be cross because again if you want to make a brown you use cadmium red if you use a Lizzie and Crimson to make a brown, you'll end up with a purple. You can get some nice browns, but if you pick up red and blue, and it happens to be these two, you're going to get a purple. And this is why some people get upset. And you think, hang on a minute, you know, why can't I get a brown? Because red and blue make brown. But a pinky red and a pinky and a purple blue make purple. The same was if you want to make a purple and you think, well, actually, yeah, I know that a red and a blue make purple. But if it happens to be a cadmium red and a cerulean blue, there's no warm red in any of that. So you get a brown, you get a dark purple, a brownie purple, but you won't get the bright purple and that's why I always say you need two yellows and I can't do it with this you need a warm and a cold yellow you need cadmium and Elysian crimson and you need French ultramarine so you need six colors but from those six colors you can make all these so we'll pick out a favourite colour that we have. Um, the olives are a different colour, but say you wanted a hooker's green. You don't want to make a hooker's green with French ultramarine. And I just put that to that side, that to that side, and that to that side, because that's... So you want a bright green here. You need to use... The, the blue and the yellow that are nearest together on the colour wheel, which is the lemon yellow and the cerulean blue. They're cold and cold. They're going to make the brightest green. Now you can make some gorgeous greens with these two, this yellow and this, but they're not going to be bright because they've got a touch of warmth in them because this is a warm yellow and this is a warm purple blue. The same with an orange. If you take this cold yellow and this pinky red, you're not going to get a gorgeous cadmium orange, orange, true orange colour. But if you take the cold red and the orange yellow the, the warm yellow cadmium yellow they're nearest on the color wheel and you're going to get the best orange 
That's not to say you can't get other oranges. All these, um, all these saffrons and English reds and all these others are all a combination of these, these colours. But you really only need the six main colours to make all these others. Did that make it? Does that make sense? So I love the cadmium red. It's it's the true red. It's the coolest, coldest red. It makes the best orange. I love it in its own right because it's very famous, it's very expensive, it's a pure colour. But I also love it for making an orange if I don't want to buy an orange. Now, there's nothing to stop you buying these six colours and two and the three pri uh, secondary colours. So you could go to buy a true purple, a true orange, and a true green. And you'll probably find in a lot of professional and very good quality watercolour sets, you will get a purple, a green, and an orange. But you'll also get a pinky red, a cold red, a warm yellow, a cold yellow, a cold blue, and a purple blue. Because they know that these six colours will make all the other colours. So you don't need these. So if everything's going to be a, you know, 10 or 20 pounds, you can leave these out if, if you don't get them in a set. Now you probably find that if you look at any art set, whether it's pencil, anything that's water-based that you're going to mix, or oils, acrylics, um, gouache, a good set will have a pinky red, a cold red, a warm yellow, a cold yellow, um, a cold blue, and a warm purpley blue. And they will also have a bright green, a bright purple, and a bright orange. And if you see those colours in a set, there isn't a colour on the planet you cannot make very easily, very easily. So if you have these two colours here, these are easy to make. You want um, probably a big blodge of this and a tiny bit of that and you get this colour. You want half of this and half of this and you're going to get, you're going to get a purple red right in the middle. So you're going to get a ready purple. If you get a, a French ultramarine and a purple, you're going to get, and it's a gorgeous colour, and I forgot what it's called. Not the royal blue. Um, like a cobalt violet. You're going to get a blue, a blue violet. So you're going to get another gorgeous colour. So you, it's not quite a purple, and it's not quite a blue. It's dead in the middle. So then you've got another gorgeous colour. The same with this, these two. You've got a green and you've got the blue. Mix these two together and you've got like a hooker's green. It's probably the best one because it, it's a nice, dark, rich green, but it's not a bright green. The same with the yellows. You've got a lemon yellow and you've got a bright green. And Sorry, you've got a, a grass green. You're going to get this gorgeous, um, I think it's called... light green because it's half and half sometimes they call it light green sometimes they call it something else if you wanted the chinese green that is a very cold cold green but it's not quite a yellow there is a hint of green to it and you can see that and you hold them together but if you haven't got this you can use quite a lot of this lemon yellow and a tiny tiny little bit of this green or to mix the middle green, a tiny bit of this green, and then you're going to get a gorgeous Chinese green, so you didn't have to buy this one. And obviously, it's a bit like cake mixing now. You know, the more of the bright green you get, the nearer this side you're going to get. The more of the blue you put, the more turquoisey blues you get. And this is why you get your turquoise blues and your turquoise greens. Um, if you mix these two together, you're going to get um, a, a pale, a, a bluey green. So that one, I would think, is 
uh, that's the greenish blue but there is one called that's a bluish green and that's a greenish blue so this one is just on the blue side and this is just on the green side in the middle is probably a phthalo blue so it's it's is it is it a blue is it a green it's smack bang in the middle but if you have these two colors and you mix 50 50 you're going to get a perfect blue green and then you've got the variation of adding more blue to get these colors and more green to get these colors so you get the blue the green blue on this side you get the blue green and then you kind of go round and round and round till you get back to this colour. Does that make sense? So I have 60 colours in this particular set here, which I love. It's the big fat chunky set here. There's only 60 colours, but I can make, well, I could make a million colours if I really wanted, but I can make every single colour. So you don't, I mean, it's wonderful to have these. Um, now, the olive colours and the pale colours are tints and tones. So these are your lilacs, uh, these are your roses, uh, these are saffrons. Um, then you've got um, Sahara yellow. Um, now, Naples yellow is a very cold yellow but it's it's got a white into it so it, that goes here but I'll go through these different video because these are tones and tints and shades this is adding white or adding water if it's a watercolor I don't normally use white but one thing I will say about blacks is if you're doing something and you want a shadow you can do two things to dull any of these colors and make a shadow do not use black. Do not use dark colours. Use a complementary colour. If you want to make, um, I do have a video called Grungy Neocolor 2s. And I think it was in the um, Mythomorphia, one of the Kirby Roseanne books. And I made grungy colours by adding complementary. So in order to get the purple to look like a shadow and to look like a dirty, a dirty purple, I added a touch of ya light yellow. In order to make the reds look a bit grungy, I added a bit of green. In order to make some gorgeous, dirty, grungy greens, I added a touch of red. In order to make an orange, kind of like a burnt orange or a grungy, um, there's some quite nice saffron um, and grungy colours. What's that one called? I like a Venetian red is, is a bit of an orangey red, but it's a bit grungy. It's not a bright red. Or add a little bit of blue. If you want the blues to look kind of, um, uh, not phthalo, but um, a midnight blue and even, even an indigo blue. You don't add grey. You can do if you want to be quick, but the best thing to do is to just add a little bit of orange and it will dull these colours down. So if you have this set, you've also got another double set of sh shadows with the orange. You've got the same amount of greens and, and, and all these greens here will have another set of tones to be grungy behind here by adding a touch of red. Then you can double that amount by adding the other red or the other yellow or the other blue. You've trebled your colours without doing anything apart from adding its complementary. And that's nothing to say adding water in different degrees. Remember my little colour book you know, you have one colour, ten shades. So even though you've only got these, um, even if you just had the six main colours, you've got 60 shades here because and tones because you can add water to them. 
So you can have the brightest colour going down to a pale, palest, almost a, a white, a tinted white colour. Here you can have a blue to a sky blue to a tinted blue, almost a, um, a white, cold grey. But it's a blue. But you've got it from here. Then when you start adding the complementary colours, which I'll go into the next video, you then can double and treble the colours again, even with a limited palette. But from these main colours, if you have the nine primaries, two, two primaries and one each of the secondary colours, there isn't a colour on the planet you cannot make. All it's to do with is just taking a little bit more of one and mixing them together. But that doesn't include mixing other colours together. That's just getting these bright colours on your colour wheel. So you have a huge colour wheel just from the six main colours or maybe the two uh, secondary colours as well. Oh, sorry, Judy, I've just cut the top of the bottom of that second line down. It will, if you bear with me two seconds. Um, I'm going to finish on this one, and then the next video will be all about making tones and shades and tints, which is taking our bright colours um, and adding either, if it's an oil paint, again, this, 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 uh, this colour wheel is works with oils so you could buy six oil paints instead of buying a full set or you normally find if you want if you as long as you have two yellows two blues and two reds you probably find most good quality um, suppliers like um, uh, Winsor Newton and Derwent and those they will put and the Neo Color 2's the Caran d'Ache um, and um, Faber Castell they have, they always put a bright purple, a bright orange and a bright green in. So you're set, and a black and a white. And that's your traditional set. If you see those colours in, you know it's going to be a good set. You don't need any of the others. You don't need any lemon yellows. You don't need any scarlets. You don't need any vermilions. You don't need any scarlet lakes. Lakes are always good. The purples. You don't need any of the lilacs or anything else. You don't need any cobalt blue. You don't need... Um, um, sorry, um, there's a cobalt. There's a true blue. A royal blue. You don't need any Elysian crimsons. Uh, sorry, not Elysian crimsons. Uh, phthalos. Um, you don't need hookers or they do normally put the hookers green in because it's like in the middle there. It's a traditional one. So you don't need any of all these other colours because you can make them very easily. It's not rocket science. It's because they're next to each other. All these colours can be made with those. All these colours can be made with those. But if you didn't have that and you didn't have that, you can make all these colours with a cadmium red and a lemon yellow. Uh, sorry, an, uh, a cadmium yellow. You can make all these colours. That should be about there. So you can make all these uh, these reds, pinky reds, purpley blues and the purple blue with Elysian crimson and French ultramarine. You can make all those greens... And all those yellow greens and turquoises and greeny blues and bluey greens with these two colours. So you can you can make all of them with that, but just having the purple and the yellow, the, sorry, the purple and the orange and the green, that's why very good quality um, suppliers, art, art colour suppliers, whether it's oils, acrylics, watercolours, uh, the near colours and, and the pencils and the pens, they put these in to make life easier. Um, but you can normally find that this is the set that appears, um, and it appears with black and white. So you've got two, four, six, eight. Now sometimes you don't get the green, and you get a black and a white. 
and I think sometimes they put a brown in and a black and a white and it's a 12 set. Um, but if you really wanted to get some really good colours that all match together, you can make your own colours. And I made 630 colours from three printer inks. And if you think of your printer, but it's very messy, so I will warn you, your printer ink is your very cold lemon yellow, your very pinky Elysian crimson, and your very cold cerulean blue. These are your printer inks. The very, very pinky red, the very, very cold yellow, and the very, very cold blue. But the purples are difficult to make. I found it difficult to make French ultramarine. So even I, I struggled. But I did make 630 colours from here. But my purples were grungy because I couldn't get a nice blue purple. So if we add French ultramarine, we add cadmium red and we add cadmium yellow, that's given us our primaries. And from these colours, we can make every colour under the rainbow. Purples just make it a little bit easier. But I don't like greens. I like making greens from my yellows and my blues. There is a connection. And I normally might make in my oranges as well, because you might want an orangey red or a yellowy red, like a gamboge. So you can make that with these two colours. So... I like mixing from six colours and again if you had to buy six tubes of paint which I did buy the student grade now I was lucky these cotton are very good quality these Winsor Newton cotton but they are student grade um, but very quickly I will just show you these two things I used um, Elysian Crimson, I used Lemon Yellow, and that's why there isn't much in there, and the red one is completely flat, I think. So I used these three colours, Cerulean Blue, Lemon Yellow, and Elysian Crimson, and they are not professional watercolours, and the first page I did is my favourite page, because I made... Oops, I tell a lie... Can't find it. So this horse was painted with three tubes of paint, which cost 99p each. But you can see my purple wasn't the brightest. It's a lovely grungy purple. My bright blues were beautiful because I had the cerulean blue. My reds, I had the cadmium reds, I had the pinky reds, so I got some nice oranges because I had the cold yellows and the cold reds. So, and I still managed to make all these absolutely gorgeous greens. There's hundreds of greens here, which was made with basically these two colors. But if you make an orange with these two colors and you put orange with your blue, you get some gorgeous different greens than your basic hookers and sap. So you can do it with three, but it's a lot easier doing it with six. Um, but again, that would have been six pounds. Um, so there's the cadmium red, the cadmium yellow, and my, I think it's because it's used up, I've thrown it away. Um, but I have an ultramarine. So from those six colours, you can make a lot more colours. Um, and that's what I did when I did the next one, which I will show you. Um, I bought professional ones. It was the bunnies. It was the bunny rabbits. This was made with six professional Winsor Newton professional watercolours. Um, and again, some gorgeous greens in there. And again, I had 
my favourite colour for mushrooms is, and this is one colour but added water to it. There's only one colour that I made but I added water to get the pale colours. And that is half Elysian Crimson and half Cadmium Red. Mixed together 50-50 gives you the gorgeous ready it's a bit warmer than the cad and it's not as big pinky as the Elysian Crimson and it gives you the perfect mushroom toadstool colour. So that was with three colours, non-professional and that was with six colours and they were professional. And I actually prefer the student Cotman grade for, because they're not as sticky. I have these and they always remain sticky because it's the pigment. There's less pigment in the professionals because of obviously the price and there's a better, uh, sorry, beg your pardon, binder. There's more pigment and less binder in the professional one. And they are stickier because in their natural form, pigments are sticky. But the, the Cotman student grade have got a little bit more binder in and less pigment, which is why they are cheaper. But it's the perfect combination for mixing colours, I think. Now, if you're doing watercolours and making them very wet, then that's fine. But for what I use them for, the Cotman are colours, they're beautiful colours. Um, so that's with that. And then, lastly, which leads on to the next video, is the Neos adding complementary colours, you get grunge. So these are pure colours. There is a video on this. Pure colours. So I've scratched red and green together and then I've used the brush over the green, brushed over the red to dull it, which has picked up red, and then dulled over the green. And I've just done it once, so you can tell some are grungier than others. And I've used complementary colours. And then to take the colours to the extreme of mixing complementary colours together. This is complementary colours making greys. So you don't have to buy any greys. We have obviously a greeny grey, a purpley grey, a blue grey, a reddy grey. All depends on the complementary colour. And that's taking these neos to another extreme rather than using them as pure stick colors which is what they are so you can use them as pure color you can mix them in the traditional way or you can use them as grungy to dull them and make shadow colors and tints and tones or you can really take them two together to make grays And that's all from six colours. So thank you for watching.